Ready to get back on our Father's Word? New book today, Book of Ruth. One of, one of the only two books that are named for a woman, and that woman being Ruth, and Ruth meaning beautiful, or it can also mean a female friend, and blessed of God. This is what, what is interesting about this book is it was always read at Pentecost. And many might wonder, well, why, why at Pentecost? Well, it documents the genealogy of David as well as Messiah. But also, on Pentecost Day, both men and male and female spoke. And to understand the credentials of Ruth as far as being uh, eligible to be in the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, kinsman redeemer comes strongly into play. Let's, let's get one thing straight. A lot of people call Ruth a Gentile. A Gentile she was not. She was of Moab, which is to say of Lot, which was to say Abraham's nephew. She was definitely not a Gentile. She was an Adamic person and perfectly in that line to be able to, to um, acquire that. Now, in Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 3, it states that no Moabite can ever be in the kingship, that is to say, rule. That would put Ruth out there with the exception of one thing. It's masculine. It means no Moabite man can ever be utilized in that lineage that way. Ruth, naturally, with her name meaning a female friend, was um, uh, had that had no part on her. So coming out the gate, Ruth was an Adamic person. Ruth was um, uh, a female and not locked in by Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 3, and perfectly capable and able through genealogy to be in the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ as well as David. So having put those, put those things to sleep, you know, our Father doesn't make mistakes in the lineage of Christ. All down through, whether it would have been Judah where Tamar had to lie and wait for him, God always saw that the lineage was kept clean as far as Adamic um, genealogy was concerned. This, this uh, book probably was written by Solomon, I'm sorry, Samuel, to um, verify as um, the genealogy of both David and the Lord Jesus Christ. Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 22, verses 3 and 4 presents David's parents. So, having said that, laying that groundwork, let's go with it. The book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 1. And it reads, Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, this would be where Christ was born. It was also where uh, Benjamin was born, the last of the twelve uh, of the tribes which would bring about the, the death of his mother, which she would name him ben -Ami, but then the father would change his name to Benjamin, which means son of my right hand. Went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And, and so it was that uh, they went for what? For food. There was a famine there. Verse 2, And the name of the man was Elimelech. And the name of his wife, Naomi, Naomi means um, a, a, um, a pleasant one. And the name of his two sons, Malon, Malon means sick. And he must have been because he died pretty soon after this. And Kalion, which means to pine. What was he pining about? Well, maybe sick also. He died soon. Ephrathites uh, of Benjamin Judah. This was um, one of the ancient names for Bethlehem, Judah, Ephrathites, uh, okay. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. They, they set up housekeeping there. Why? Because there was food during the famine. Verse 3, And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left and her two sons. 
Verse 4, And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpha. Uh, that, that means uh, fawn or hind in the Hebrew tongue. And the name of the other, Ruth, which means beautiful or a female friend. I like to, I prefer beauty, beauty, beautiful. And they dwelled there about uh, 10 years. So here we have a span of time, 10 years uh, along, that Ruth is a member of this family. Verse 5, And Malon and Kilion died also, both of them, their father and here both of the sons. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. She lost all three of them. And here she has two daughter-in-laws, and she's in a strange land. Verse 6, then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. They were being blessed again. There was plenty of food there. She's going home. Verse 7, Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on the way to return into the land of Judah. Go, again, going home. Uh, crops are plentiful there again, and things looking good. God is blessed. Verse 8, And Naomi said unto um, her two daughters-in-law, Go return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, and ye have dwelt as uh, you have dealt dwelt with the dead and with me. You were good to my sons, and you've been good to me. You you go ahead. What she's about to tell them is, I'm too old to have any more children. You wouldn't want to wait for them anyway to wed them, if that be the case. You're free. To, you're released. You can go on home. Verse nine: The Lord grant you that ye may find rest each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. I mean, it was it was a sad thing. They had they had this ten years together, and um, time for the parting. Verse ten: And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. They loved her. That's the way Naomi was. You want to get that coming out the gate. Everybody, this woman was loved by everybody, both in, the, in and around Moab, the Moabites, as well as her own people. Verse 11. She was a good woman, in other words. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb? That they may be your husbands? Question. Of course not. She was too old even to have children. Twelve. Turn again, my daughters. Go that your way, for I am too old to have an husband. If I should say, I have hope. If I should have an husband also tonight, and should also bear sons. Thirteen. Would you tarry for them till they were grown? Of course not. You know, question. Would you stay for them from having husbands? Uh, uh, nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. It's just things have gone. I've lost my sons. I've lost my husband. The Lord loved Naomi. And things happen. But the Lord had not done this to her. It was just life. It was the times. And certainly... Uh, the father loved this woman just as everyone else did. She was a good soul. Verse 14, And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpha kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. Orpha's going to go back. 15, And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law has gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Notice the lower case. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. You go on, go back with her. Now, they did worship strange uh, strange worships and religions in this particular place, the Moabites. Verse, even down to Molochism. Verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me, 
not to leave thee. In other words, uh, allow me if you would. Uh, and, uh, and so it is. Or to return from following after thee. And he, she's going to give a sevenfold declaration here. Seven being spiritual completeness. Listen to it carefully if you want to know what kind of girl Ruth was. Here it comes, following, from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, one. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge, two. Thy people shall be my people, three. And thy God, my God, four. And there's that declaration that she had accepted the God, Yahweh of Naomi, and worshipped him and wanted to remain. 17, where thou diest, I will die, five. And there will I be buried, six. The Lord do so to me, and more also it ought, but death part thee and me, seven. Sevenfold um, uh, pledge to uh, Naomi by Ruth. And she meant business. She did not want to go back to false religion. And bear in mind again, one of the most important things about this book and what makes it so important is kinsman redeemer. How that you take care of you kin. 18. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. She, she accepted that. That sevenfold declaration convinced her. Verse 19. So they too went until they came to Bethlehem, that's the house of bread, the very birthplace of Christ and Benjamin. And it came to pass when they were come to Bethlehem that all the city was moved about them, and they said, Is this Naomi? And now, in, in this, this documents why that she was called the pleasant one. Everybody loved her. And they, they were thrilled to have her back. Now, this is after 10, maybe even 15 years. Naomi is home. They still remember her. And they're very, very pleased that she has returned to them. And, um, and so it is. Verse 20. And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, my pleasant one. Call me Mara. For Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. Call me the bitter one. Well, they're not going to accept that because everybody loved her. And they will still call her the pleasant one, which is to say Naomi. Verse 21. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, my pleasant one? Seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me. Now, she may have lost her husband and her two sons, but she's bringing home Ruth, beauty, a female friend, a girl who will ultimately be in the very genealogy of David as well as the Lord Jesus Christ. But she did not come home empty. Basically, her quiver was full, for she had brought home one of the mothers, umbilical cord to umbilical cord, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so, far be it. But sometimes things can seem to run at the time. It will come to her, and she will be so thankful. Next verse, please, verse 22. So Naomi returned... And Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. Now, barley harvest is the first ripen to grain to ripen. It, it is called poor man's bread. Because wheat later would be full, and it, but a little bit slower crop in maturing. And uh, so it is. Right there at harvest time. And... Um, Fortunate there, apparently, they got a good crop. Chapter 2, verse 1. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth, 
of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And again, another in the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Boaz means fleetness, and fleet he was. He was quick, both in mind, he was sharp, and um, was able to prosper uh, among the brethren. But I want you to note the word a kinsman, because the main meat of this book is kinsman redeemer. And ultimately, so let's just cut right to the chase. You see, Christ is your kinsman redeemer. He is your kinsman because he is the son of our father. And he pays a price to redeem you and whomsoever will believe. That So kinsman redeemer goes a long way here. Boaz was that kinsman. Verse 2. And Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, Let me now go into the field, I mean it's barley harvest, got it, and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. Now, uh, to find grace, it was dangerous for for widows or single women that went into the fields following the workers. Many of them were molested. Many of them attacked in those fields. It, finding grace means that God's going to look after me. And they had to eat. Okay. So let, let me go glean, let me, which meant after the reapers had picked up the grain, a head or two of the barley would drop to the ground and, be, and the gleaners would, could come along and take that one little piece and gather it all day long. Verse 3, And she went, Naomi a letter, agreed, And she went and she came and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. I don't... I, Hap is an Anglo-Saxon word meaning happen. Just happened that she ended up on Boaz's property. You know, God's in charge, and I believe that with all my heart. I don't think she ended up there by accident. She ended up there because God sent her there. God maneuvered her there. And there she is in the very field of Boaz. Verse 4. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem, and he said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. He was good to his people. And this documents that he was a believer. Verse 5, And then said Boaz unto his servants that were set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? Talking about Ruth. Who's that girl? Verse 6, And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitess damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. Now, Boaz is quick. He knows this is my own kinfolk. Naomi is my, I, I'm almost a next of kin. Verse 7, and she said, this is what Ruth said, she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and hath continued even from the morning until now that she carried a little in the house. And what this means is even at, even at lunchtime, when we went to lunch, she stopped gleaning so there would be no possibility we could accuse her of gleaning where it had not been gleaned, I mean, uh, reaped. In other words, she'd be stealing. So she, she was being very, very careful. Verse 8, And then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter, go, go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. You stay here with them. Now, he, he's, he's interested. I mean, here, why? He's kinsman redeemer. It's kinfolk. Verse 9. 
Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? They're going to leave you alone. And when thou art a thirst, go into the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. In other words, you make yourself at home. And he's, he's pretty well, I mean, here that kinsman redeemer has already put that wing out. And that protection is going forth to protect this one that is kinsman. Verse 10. And then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? Verse 11. Listen carefully. And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how that thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity, and art come unto a people which thou knewest not hitherto. And in other words, he's checked up on it right away. And of course, why wouldn't he know Naomi? Because she was the pleasant one. And she was a relative. And certainly he loved Naomi. And here this Ruth is being good to Naomi. And taking care of her. Providing for her. She's an, she's an old, older woman now. And she needs that help. And that touched Boaz's heart. Verse 12. Boaz continues speaking. The Lord recompense thy work. And a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. This documenting he knew also that she had accepted the living God, Yahweh, that uh, the, uh, the, the father of Messiah himself. And, and he respected that. Verse 13, Then she said, let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for that thou hast comforted me, and for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thy handmaidens. This is, they are talking here heart to heart and mind to mind. I'm not going to say it's love at first sight, but it's obvious that kindling flame is there. What flame? Kinsman Redeemer family. Verse 14, And Boaz said unto her, At mealtime, come thou hither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. This is poor man's wine, okay, or is a wine. Not vinegar as you know vinegar today. And she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her parched corn. And she did eat and was suffused, suffused uh, and left. I mean, she had all she could eat and then some. I mean, he's slipping parched corn right to her, whereby she has plenty. He's looking out for her. That's kinsman redeemer. Got it? Can you begin to see why this is read at Pentecost? When both male daughters and sons shall speak out with God using them? Fifteen. And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not. You let her glean wherever she wants to, even where it's not harvested, if she chooses to. You let her get in there and harvest grain. Verse 16. And let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her, and leave them that she may glean them, and rebuke her not. Boy, he is, he's looking out for her big time here, naturally again. Kinsman, redeemer. You know, God arranges things. It would be real easy to pass this off that, well, he's just fond of her. Also, God's dealing with his heart and his mind. Putting together the lineage through which Messiah will come who is your kinsman redeemer. The kinsman redeemer of all God's children that will believe upon him. 
how precious it is that our Father looks out for his own. How precious it is that God's plan um, is just perfect. And when you follow it, everything falls in place. And then you know it's a God. So he's taking care of this little one. And um, wait until she gets back to Naomi and is carrying all the leftovers and what a harvest she had that day. Next verse, please. Verse 17. And verse 17 reads, So she gleaned in the field until evening and beat out that she had gleaned. And, and it was about an ephah of barley. I mean, she had a, about a bushel. Now, beat out means uh, these were in heads and little sheaves and you you um, place them in a in a bag and you beat them until the grain falls from the sheave and then you let the wind blow the sheave away and you have the grain. She had, she had a bushel. 18. And she took it up and went into the city and her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. She brought forth and gave to her that she had reserved after she was sufficed. In other words, she even brought home the leftover victuals from lunchtime and uh, her leftover lunch and gave it to Naomi. And um, uh, what, what a fantastic haul she had, or gift she had made and was giving it, sharing it, and giving it to her mother in law. 19. And her mother-in-law said unto her, Where hast thou gleaned today? Question. And where wroughtest thou? Question. Blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee. And she showed her mother-in-law with whom she had wrought, and said, The man's name with whom I wrought today is Boaz. That's splendid. And naturally, Naomi knows Boaz. Because they're kin. Verse 20, And Naomi said unto her daughter-in-law, Blessed be he of the Lord, who hath not left off his kindness to the living and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, The man is near of kin unto us, one of our next kinsmen. The closest kinsmen, one of the closest kinsmen we have. Now this is, this is, explains, why that he was so careful to protect Ruth. She was family. Even though she was gleaning, which was what the poor would do. Not, there's no shame in being poor. Okay. It's kind of a shame to stay that way when you have an opportunity to work yourself out of it. But there is no shame in being poor. Because God has always made it possible for anybody to work, and, and to uh, prosper and to be blessed by the living God. That's just the way it is. Verse 21 to continue. And Ruth the Moabitess said, He said unto me also that thou shalt keep fast by my young men until they have ended all my harvest. He, he wants me to come back and, and glean right with them. 22. And Naomi said unto Ruth her daughter-in-law, it is good, my daughter, that thou go out with his maidens, that they meet thee not in any other field. In other words, um, there's um, let no one catch you in another field because it's dangerous. But you're protected there by Boaz and even by the men that work for him as well as the maidens. Verse 23 so she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end of barley harvest and of wheat harvest also and dwelt with her mother-in-law. And, and so it is that our Father so blesses those that follow him and that, that realize how precious it is to have a Father that does bless, that does protect. And again, many people say, well, maybe this was just all an accident. There wasn't anything accidental about it. It's God's plan. 
God has a plan for all of his elect. Chapter 3, verse 1. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, My daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? In other words, um, uh, she is looking out for her. Verse 2. And now is not Boaz of our kindred? With whose maidens thou wast? Behold, he went with barley tonight in the threshing floor. And we'll pick this up in the next lecture here. And, uh, and, and so it is. Naomi because, is taking advantage of the kinsman redeemer here. You know, this lets you know there's a way to get ahead. And, and so it is. We saw it back in the 12th verse of this chapter. Whereas Boaz, that splendid one, would say, The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. In other words, you have three things there. Work, reward, and trust, bringing forth the love and the blessings of Almighty God. Always work. Is what God wants to see. I know you're, you show me your work and I'll see your faith. Faith comes with that hearing and with love. But here we have this message that is always read at Pentecost. 50 days after Passover. To bring a message. We'll pick this message up in the next lecture. Bless your hearts. Listen a moment. Won't you please.